<clears throat> so, when we last gathered, the party had, at the ending of their last mission, so to sort, they had to very quickly leap inside of Zero's car because someone had uh, been leaking the events of what was taking place on social media. And it was very quickly scrubbed, but in order to protect everyone's identities, they were hauled out of there <clears throat> really, really fast. And as everyone was recuperating and recovering and whatnot, it was pointed out to the party that they were incredibly tired physically. It was shown all over their faces and such. Cynthia made everyone a very nice meal to help them get their strength back and help them rest. And they were very quickly sent off to the hotel to rest for the night. However, when they awoke, the city was in extreme turmoil. There were civilians screaming for their lives. They were surrounded by demons. And across several other areas in the entertainment district, uh, the important figureheads such as Regis in the hospital and even Francesca's club itself were under heavy siege and under attack. And the party, as quickly as they could, bounced between location to location to get things under control. And once they made it back to Francesca's place, surprisingly, the interior and exterior weren't anywhere close to damaged. But on the inside, there was this very large and grotesque and demonic machina looking being floating in front of them as Zero, Cynthia, and Francesca were doing their best to fight it off and prevent it from getting inside. And as the party did their best to whittle it down little by little, it, for a moment, went completely silent. And then it began to vibrate. And then it went limp again. And then, as it spoke, it shook and it began to emit a disgustingly bright light. And its aggression towards the party grew at an exponential level. And while the light stopped blinding the party, it began to surround the creature itself as its energy became very, very visibly apparent. And the last thing that it spoke was, you will fall. And the boss entered its burst phase. And now, we continue our boss fight at that exact moment in time. All right, who's doing what? Wait, uh, whose turn was it last, Pokers? Uh, I do believe it was her turn, but because she is not present, she will not be in this fight. Yeah, um... So I do believe in the next order of turns, it... I think it is... Drava? Yep. Okay, so as of Draper noticing that the enemy in front of them has become far more aggressive than what it previously was, she is going to act incredibly defensive for a time, and she's going to spend her entire turn um, moving people with Eroga, and casting her defensive spells so and because 
Zero, Cynthia, and Francesca are all close to each other within five feet. She is going to use Eroga to bring them closer to her. And then for her remaining four actions, she is going to cast uh, Shellra on Zero, Cynthia, Francesca, and Lion. So I'm going to click this one four times. One, two, three, and four. And then she's going to use her ending action to defend. And that is her turn. Sweet. Okay, so I'm not uh, confident in what I'm about to do, but we're gonna fucking get it done. So let's go. <laughs> oh, my throat's dry. So who's up now? It's me, hold on, sorry, my bad. Okay. Go. Okay, you have increased your attack and magic attack. Put an icon up so that way I remember. This works. Okay, so we have a limit break on our hands. Let's go. <clears throat> Let's see here. All right. Hold on. Okay. So um, first one is. Player will keep striking relative to the amount of ammo left in the weapon. So I have um six ammo left. Okay. Uh, each strike would be accompanied by a one D. Uh, so I guess that's six, right? Yep. How about I do that? Uh, you would type. Uh, slash R 1d6. Oh, slash R space 1d6. Alright. Next would be 1d5. The last two would be rolled as two 1d2s. Oh, hold on. Confused with something? My bad. So, uh, how many times am I able to do that? So it says I do 1d6 and then, um, I guess I would get. Yeah, so with uh, however much ammo you have left, you hit the attack once, that consumes one ammo, and then you do it again and again and again until you run out. 
but so 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 you did the first. That's the one d six. So you hit the attack again, then you roll the one d five. All right. Okay, there's one. Two. Okay. Three. The last two we roll is two one d twos. Yep. Yikes. Rip. Okay. So that is three critical follow-ups. So your damage before you hit your limit break was one thousand three hundred and twenty-seven, and that minus the knot's defense comes up to eight hundred and twenty-seven. So allow me to make that adjustamento. Excuse me. Boss doesn't have a health bar until we use Libra. Uh, the boss does have health bar. Can you not see it? Nope. Nope. Oh. Hang on. I can fix that. Yeah, because Libra was uh already used in the fight. So. Early on. Libra plus. Yep. Let's go. this. Who? Okay. So now also, I use my limit, I get all my actions back, right? Uh, yeah, but let me do a little bit okay. stuff first. So one, two, three crit follow-ups. Let's go up to one. Let's divide it by four. Alright, so you learn break. Dealt 531 plus an additional 133. So that is another 664 minus defense. That's another 164 of damage dealt. And as such, we will do that. And yes, after using your limit break, you do regain all of your actions. Okay, you draw two ammo from Knot. And as for the spells you get, you have obtained one glare. <coughs> You obtained one glare and one holy. Okay. Okay, so we got 37 plus 268 plus 30 plus. Alright, that comes out to yet another 866 points of the damage. So and I'm... how can I cast my holy since I got one? Uh. For you. It will be, uh, let's see, it would be R slash space, I mean slash R space, 6D14 plus your magic attack stat. So 
So 60, 14 plus magic? Okay. Yep. yep. Damn, that is unfortunate. Mm. What makes it even more unfortunate is that due to Anat's natural defense being 500, normally you would <laughs> you would deal no damage, but because Anat takes extra damage from magic attacks, you are dealing 233 points of damage. Damn. And after those series of attacks, Anat's body flashes a pristine white. And then it returns to its normal color. And with all of Lion's actions done, it is time to continue onward. Whose turn is it after? Uh, I don't believe you yours is turn. Your, 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 your right. turns. Whoops. Alright, so... I'm just gonna casually kick this door down and make my way in. Okay, do that. I notice everyone in their battle stances, and then I see that, and then I'm all like, what the fuck? And Drava looks over to you, and she asks, where the hell have you been? And why did you bring food with, you know what? Sushi. It's sushi. <laughs> you told me that this stuff was to die for, so I decided to go get some. Tuna. You, yeah, I got to him. Have you not just not been paying attention to everything that's been going on over the last couple of hours? Well, yeah. I've noticed some creepy crawlies around, so I've decided to clean them off the streets before I got here. Well, that's the best possible answer you could have given me. Now I'm less angry. Oh, um, what's with the that mechanical mess? And before Drava answers you, Zero interjects and says, <clears throat> "Now is really not the time for this. Put your shit down, fight, and we'll tell you later. The bastards we've been working to kill, uh, take care of. Summon this thing to take us out." Uh -uh. Right, you know, you know, they could have at least made that thing at least uh, more elegant. I don't. This is Francesca speaking. I don't think demons of this caliber are supposed to be of the elegant type. Regardless, Ye um, please, no. It's not please. This is an order. Assist us. Yeah, sure. Just blinks twice and just does a quick salute, loud and clear, and then he wolves down the rest of the sushi. Let's do this. Sorry. Let's do this. All right. Now, um, I, I know what your speed stat is, but for the sake of continuity, until this fight ends, the turn order will be Drava, Lion, Yashua, and Henry. Okay. Cool. Actually, let me just 
put this safely onto the side. I don't want this sushi to go to waste. All right, uh, let's. What should I do with you? Oh, that was awful. Oh, damn. Ooh. See, that's what happens when you fight with a with a full stomach. You get a low roll. Looks like you shot yourself in the foot, buddy. <laughs> that's not how critical failures work. <laughs> I accidentally shoot the container full of sushi. No! Okay. So, with your series of attacks, as the bullets travel through the air, the closer that they get to a knot, they begin to disintegrate. And two of your bullets manage to hit a knot. However, they only deal 10 damage apiece. As a knot's body once again flickers that pristine white before it resumes its original color. Uh, bullets aren't effective. It uses reactive armor. What the hell is going on with this thing? Well, if you were listening, they did stay tweaked to magic. I'm, I'm saying this in character, Banana. I'm saying this in character, Banana. You weren't there to know that knowledge, so you don't know that. Continuing on, um, Drava is going to speak up, and she is going to say that Zeril did say that this was a demon that the cult summoned to kill us. So, whoever conjured this damn thing has to have some knowledge of what we're capable of, hence why your bullets were rendered more or less useless just now. Ah, <sighs> Yashua just looks at his guns and just thinks. Well, well, I'm pretty bad with magic, so. Hmm. You think? Do you think you'll be able to activate his barrier fast enough if I shoot a point blank? Uh, you do not know if there is a barrier active or not, but... But I'm to not... me, it looked like a barrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm not going to say no. So, feel free to take that risk. All right. How many actions did I do? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, my turn's done. Yes, sir. Alright. Henry, if you would. My favorite attack. <laughs> okay. I gotta move up. Oh, yeah, I definitely gotta move up. some fire. Fire. The, lab, the demon has fire resistance. Fire. Oop, 
Ooh, ooh. Wow. <laughs> Don't forget to roll, um... Don't forget to roll a 1d2 for a burning chance. He did. He, the he, bottom corner. He, he put it in the, uh, okay. um, the attack itself. <clears throat> I hit one, two, three of those burns. So I don't know how many actually proc on this boss. To actually make it a burn. Uh, we will find out in a moment. See, it's always one day I get the 20s and one day he gets the 20s. Yeah, that, that, that is pretty much par for the course with you two. And so I get two nags and face plant into the ground. Okay, so with those series of attacks, um, once the fire began to smash into a knot one after the other, and you managed to hit one of a knot's eyes, however, as a result, instead of it flashing that white color that it's been doing, this time it flashed red. And while the burning did trigger, the damage that you would have done has been significantly reduced after the third fireball attack hit. Well, after the third fire hit, not, not fireball. And you have dealt 695 points of damage. A not a eye that you hit is on fire. But, you can see that even with the yellow glow around it, you can see small traces of red and orange on the inside of it. I'll reflect the HP change in a moment. Okay, so with all of the player characters taking their turn, uh, Anat, Ana is going to begin to violently shake again and for a brief moment it is going to move from position to position and is going to teleport across several different spaces in the room before stopping right in front of the party. He's on top of us. Well, it, it's that. Just assume this is on in front, okay? Anyway. <laughs> I need a wisdom saving roll, please. From everybody? From everyone? Yes. Yep. Alright, Drava passed hers. Shit wisdom. Well, I'm so fucking dead. Drava and Yashua pass theirs. Uh, Anat is going to speak the, the following words <clears throat> You will give your life force and your soul over to me. And, Kenny, you will lose 20% of your current health. Henry, you as well will lose 20% of your current health. And you will lose 100 MP. Though, because Lion does not have MP... He will lose one ammo and his other drawn spell. And 
in retaliation, Dreva will vehemently deny what Anna ordered her to do, and she will begin prepping her own countermeasure, but as a result, she will not be taking her battle turn. But because Anad used most of its actions to maneuver around the field and convince the party to do something they should not be doing, that eye that was burned will not regenerate but something will take its place as the rest of the eyes begin to glow and a very very ominous crimson red and because Dreva is not taking her battle turn it is Lion's turn I'm weak, guys. Alright, uh... Okay. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Hey. Okay, you leaping strike. Yeah, you're using leaping strike to move from Anat's front to its side. I'm assuming. I guess I thought it like moved towards the enemy, so I didn't think I could move away or anything. Oh, well, I'm just saying like uh, based on where you move your token. But yeah. if you're moving away from that, that that's cool. Okay. So, with your attacking phase, good sir, you have dealt 1,539 points of damage to the enemy. And Ana lets out a, a shriek of pain and the eyes glow one stage brighter. That's good. Uh, Yashua, it is your turn. <gasps> Excuse me. Alright. Yastra doesn't like the glowy glowiness coming out of the demon. Alright. That... That doesn't look good. I put a shining ward on Dreba. Okay. I put a shining... another shining ward. On, uh, you know what? I'll put it. I'll put one more on Henry, cause he's ultra squish. <laughs> and lastly, I'll use my final shining war on my boy Vincent over there. Let's go.
Okay, so he's pulling Drava, Henry, and Lion. Got it. Yep. Visible to everyone. Saints feet. Okay. Was it with the Falcon armor I could move freely? Yeah. Well, you can move more than 15 feet without that taking up an action. But you, you. Oh. Actually, I'm gonna keep that comment to myself because you know what you have. Time for a little field testing. How many actions I have left? Two? Yes, sir. Ooh! All right, then. We're just hitting the 20th stay. Jeez. If bullet... Well, if bullets from... from from a distance don't work, I'm just gonna have to hit them up close. Okay, with your attacking turn, you have dealt 2,000 and 96 damage and your theory has rung true uh, bullets and range attacks physical range attacks from a distance have no effect as they will disintegrate the longer they travel through his aura but having both punched and shot him up close you don't have to worry about that Alright. Yashua yeah, just stares directly at the demon and says, Oh, you're fucked now. But not looks at you in response. He does not say anything. But he oh, glares. And it glares hard. I need... What is your debuff resistance? We're having a staring contest right now. I need you. I want to intimidate it. That works. Uh, roll intimidation, good sir. God, it would have been awesome if I rolled the 20 just to make a demon coward. Well, it surpasses your intimidation roll, and while neither of you seem to budge, neither of you are particularly terrified of the other. You see sparks between our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, let's go with that. Also, uh, after your series of attacks, the the eyes that have not been struck are at their brightest. Henry? I decide. Okay. Which attack? 
Because now that those eyes are glowing more, I have to make it count. Can't you shoot icicles at its eyes? Or I could do wind barrages at all the other eyes. <laughs> Poor demon, he's gonna need eye drops after those wind barrages. <laughs> I'm gonna do in character wind barrages at all the eyes. Hope. Uh, if you are going to do that, that will be your entire turn, as that will require multiple rolls. Limit break. Hit. Hit it with everything I got. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the limit break on this one. Is your limit break charged, though? It should be. I mean, you only had one turn, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, but remember, I hit the 20 also on the turn. Let's do this. Is that okay, Riku? Yeah. Doing the limit break on all the eyes? Uh, if you use your limit break, uh, it will hit the eyes, yes. Okay, I'll do that. Cash money, honestly. Break out. Okay. <clears throat> so you, how do you? Is there any special way you want to describe yourself using the limit break attack? Every element that I have. <laughs> Just aiming for all the eyes possible. Throwing lightning, fire, and just spamming away at it. Okay. So. Just panic fire. Panic fire! A myriad of elements and colors come from the tip of your staff, and it's almost as if they have a mind of their own as they are purposely seeking out targets to strike down. And all of your strikes ring true, as the eyes, they go, they decrease in brightness by one state, so they are not anywhere near as blinding as they once were. However, oh God. <laughs> amidst all of that, Anat has his eyes specifically track each and every one before they hit him. They still hit, but Anat knows something as its glow, the glow around its body changes color once again from, <clears throat> from red to now a a deep blue nice to reflect the damage and its health bar right Joshua asks someone in the room or anyone that's listening so does anyone know anything about demons because it's changing colors and i don't like how that looks uh, well as, as, as far as i know uh you know they can change form and do unnecessarily trippy shit like what it's doing like what it's been doing uh history lessons can wait i just I, you can see and hear the panic strewn across Zero's face and his voice as, as, as he stutters over his own words, you can tell that he, for whatever reason, desperately 
wants this thing dead. So they're all knows. Hmm. Seems like this thing is adapting to our attacks. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think it just adapted to magic now. Well, Yasha puts a hand on his shoulder. Relax. We'll get through this. Hmm. When you do that, I am going to ask you to roll... Persuasion. Persuasion. Alright. He believes you. He, he he calms down a bit. Alright, so with the player turns over, Zero, in a moment of restored resolve, will pierce his sword into the ground and he will activate a mechanism and once he does that his sword from the from the handle and the hilt open up and several micro drones begin to surround Zero Francesca Cynthia Yashua and Drava because they are within proximity of them Francesca, she is going to take a st take a defensive stance, but if you look close enough, and by this I mean roll perception if you want to see it, she is going to raise an arm above her head, and you can hear crackles of what you think to be lightning around her. Okay, Yashua is the only one to see the lightning energy crackling around Francesca's body. And Cynthia, she is not going to take a defensive stance, but instead she is going to throw her weapon with all of her might at Anat's mouth. And we are going to roll to see how successful this is. Kinky. Alright. She, she threw her weapon and she threw it not as strong as she thought she did. And while it does not hit Anat's mouth, it does get lodged into one of its many, many appendages. And when is when it is Anat's turn again, it will creak and crack and slowly ascend into the air higher than what it already is it does not speak any verbal words but it's almost as if the air and the energy around Anat is being sucked into a typhoon and almost as if it is creating a tornado within its own mouth and Excuse me. The eyes, they quite literally begin to fall out of its body as energy begins bursting forth from each and every socket that is now empty and open. And it is using its limit break.
right? Elemental onslaught. Let's go. This is not good. Yo, guys, will be fine. I gave you shields. I, on the other hand, <laughs> whoops, it's gonna hit me hard. How much did your shield give us, Rick? Your full health bar. So you have 783. Oh no, that... that. My full health bar is 984. Yeah, I just so Shining Ward gives you HP equal to your current health as a barrier. 787. And... As... As Ana is letting forth all of this violent and, 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 and toxic, heinous magical energy. The ones that happen to strike the party are several explosions of varying different colors. And I am going to ask all the combatants for a strength and a constitution save to see whether they are knocked back or knocked off their feet. Strength. Strength and constitution? Yes, sir. sir. Constitution. Oh, fuck. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, well. Damn. It's still a 19, though. Yeah, but you wrote a nat 1. And that's just a failure, no matter what. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, I have to do them for Drava. One second. Okay. So, first things first. Uh, due to the damage coming from a knot coming out to. Okay. Henry, your shining ward is broken. Lion, your shining ward is broken. Henry, you will be taking... Uh-oh. Henry's dead, woo! No, you're not dead, you KO'd. Oh. <laughs> oh. I can't... I can't Damn, kinda... he got one-shotted? Holy shit. Wait, it, bro it broke through the barrier and then the excess damage is what did him in. Yeah. Okay, so back here. Uh and then Were you saying something, Lion? So I couldn't counterattack anything that was gonna hit them, right? Nope. Damn. Okay, Lion, your shining ward has broken, and you have taken 795 points of damage. On top of the shield? No, no, no. The shield soaked the damage for you. Okay. So it's the excess from the rest of the damage that hit you. Oh, man. Is it safe to say without the shield he would have been KO'd? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and... Well, Dreva's Shining Ward did not break... Uh, the impact of the attack has thrown her off of her feet, and she is knocked prone. And Zero's micro drones did their best to take as much of the damage as possible, but all of them broke are and are in pieces. And he is looking pretty, pretty hurt. And while he should be howling and shouting in pain, it is not he who is in pain. As a matter of fact, he is barely reacting at all. It is Cynthia 
who was the one on the ground writhing and rolling back and forth and howling in pure agony. And Francesca got hurt as well. However, you can see her flesh singeing, burning a little bit. Some of her hair is charred, but she does not have a look of anger and pain on her face. She has pure, unfiltered, primal rage. Anod's burst phase has ended, so the barrier will dissipate. How much damage did I take, though? Uh... I think... Yeah... Yeah, yeah, I was, I was about to get to that part. Uh... uh you... Are... Also... KO'd. However, under regular circumstances, you would just be straight up down for the count. But, you do have a special little feather in your back pocket, preventing you from being KO'd. So, instead of you just dropping down, you are at 1 HP. Someone uh, play the Kingdom Hearts low health bar sound effect. If I had that, and if it didn't drive me insane, I would play it. <laughs> there goes one of my feathers. Okay, so Drava has to spend an action getting up off her feet. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But once she gets up, instead of her casting whatever spell it was that she was about to let loose, she instead cast several copies of Eroga on her feet and for by several I mean two so she is going to use evasive maneuvers as best as possible to move over grab Henry's body and put him inside of the office and then, at the same time, she is going to move over and grab uh, Cynthia and move her to a safe location as well. And then Drava is going to stand in front of the door and she is going to guard that door with her life. She is not going to move from that spot. So that was Draven's whole turn? Uh, yeah, she spent her entire turn doing that. Alright. And, uh, Yashua's still alive, right? Yes, but he is at 1 HP. Oh boy. And I do believe you are at, like... 64. <laughs> yeah, double, double digit health. <laughs> And Zero is also at 1 HP. But. Actually. Um. Yashua and Lion, please roll wisdom. 
Not wisdom save, just wisdom. No, no, no. Intelligence. That's what I meant. Intelligence. Uh, I don't know. I don't think that's my strong suit. Let's go. Well, one time I would have been useful. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Damn it, wrong one. I'm always getting the those two confused. It's okay. Alright, well, you both pass. By one point, <laughs> I need you to roll a 15. Uh, you think to yourselves for a brief moment that any regular person should not be standing after taking all of that to the face. You think that Zeril should have probably either fallen to his feet or outright died from that attack. But for whatever reason, he did not. And you're also confused as to why Cynthia was the one to react to the pain and not Zeril. Now you may commence with your uh, combat turn, Lion. Is there what the hell is going on? <laughs> Crazy girl taking a hit like that for you. Oh, well, let's fucking go. Whoa, okay. God. <laughs> Alright. So, before I do your uh, damage stuff, so. You are now back at full ammo. And it says 31. Damn. Uh. Alright. Pick a number. From 1 to 8. Uh. 3. Hey, you want to hear the good news? Yep. You are now in possession of one Arise spell and 30 Kiraja spells. They shoot me in the face with that Kiraga. <laughs> Is that Kiraja? Yep. You have 30 Cure Threes. Dang. This guy pulled the bottomless cliff. <laughs> okay, so I will use... Hold up. I gotta go down at the spells list. Uh, we're gonna use Arise. Oh, where the fuck is it at? Uh... Oh, it's got a charge time, huh? Two actions. Yep. And because I know what you want to do it for, I'm going to tell you now that you are too far away for that. Okay, never mind. Uh, all right. Then we'll just use uh, Kiraja on. Damn, that's three actions. Holy shit! Ugh. That's pain. Looks <laughs> like the rest of my turn. Uh, bam. Okay. Uh, I'll just kind of hope I make it out of this without using those then for the moment. Uh, and that was terrible. Uh, still counts though. And is my limit break back up? I mean, it should be up, back up after taking all that damage, right? Like, I feel like. Oh yes, without a doubt. You you oh, quite literally got bodied, and if it was not for Shining Ward, you too would be KO'd. Hell yeah. So we're gonna do. Let me just add up all this damage real quick. 
Alright, so your attacks did 484. I'm gonna go ahead and reflect that in the boss's HP bar. Alright. Okay, well you got one critical follow-up, so that is an, an additional 25% damage, so 532 plus 133 is 665, Almost one off from the forbidden number, Ooh. If you got the forbidden number, it should count as an insta-kill. I, w I was actually gonna. It wasn't gonna be insta kill, but it was gonna be something special. And because you have used limit break, you are now back at five actions for this. Uh, for the rest of your combat turn. So. Uh, it is cure three, right? Not cure four. Yep. Okay, so that's seventy-five plus my max MP. I don't have a max MP, so. Yeah. So the way gun, if a gunbreaker is to use a healing spell on someone else it will be the standard calculation of the targets um, parameters so it'll I saw be you. Kiraga, Kiraga on him on Yashua yeah all right Yashua do tell me what your uh, maximum NP is good sir 1064 Okay. Or 1066. It's right there on the screen. I, I was tabbed out. That's why I asked. You said 1064? Uh -huh. No, no, no. 1046. Okay, 10. I can't I can't read numbers. 1046. Right about yeah. Alright, Yashua, you have regained 561 HP. 561? Yes, sir. Alright. And I'll use one on myself. Alright. Now, because you do not have MP for your Kiraja, it will be standard calculation, but you is going to be replacing MP with HP. And your max HP is 1112. 11, 12. So, uh, uh oh, that's the wrong number. 1122, I bet. You are regaining 599 HP. Alright. And since I have one more turn, since those cost two actions each, uh, the last one will be... I guess the last glare that I have. Oh, okay. And glares down. Five D twelve plus magic, okay. Nice 12 you got there. And then plus the bonus damage from magic. 
that glare of yours did 960 damage. Nice. And after being hit by that, Anna will very, very loudly howl in pain, and it will fall to the ground. Yashua, if you would, my good man. Yashua leaps back on his two feet. Right. Yashua is very pissed. As he should be. <laughs> like, he's, he's seething with anger right now. Not because of the damage he took, because he felt humiliated, because he got knocked off his feet. Hmm, interesting, okay. You will die. Hmm. All right. As I drop my phone, As you are striking a knot, the more you hit it, the more you realize how soft it is up close. And as you punch and fire your guns away, you happen to begin to blow off piece by piece and chunk by chunk of its flesh. So much so to where it's or rather, what used to be its face is entirely unrecognizable at this point. And you have quite literally beat it to an inch of its life. However, as you were blowing its body away, for your last hit, you hit something that appears to be a liquid casing of what appears to be a power source, but when you hit it, your hand flies back off of it. So you, you suffer recoil from striking that thing as hard as you did, and... You think to yourself, what the fuck is that, and why couldn't I break it? And with that turn having taken place, Zero staggers over to you, and he puts a hand on your shoulder and he advises you to back away and he says before you even say anything at all just turn your head behind you and look at chief it is your choice if you actually want to do that or not I momentarily hesitate because, you know, I'm really, really angry. But then I turn back to look at Chief. Right. You look at Francesca and you can see blue colored bolts of lightning 
spouting forth from her hands, her forehead, and her arms. And she takes one good look at you, and she says, Zero, he doesn't have to move. He can help me put this thing back where it came from. And without even bothering to think about questioning her, he leaves you alone. He, as best as he can, moves out of the way. And Francesca, she opens her palm. She points it at at you and your guns and she infuses them with her own energy. And after doing such, she is going to walk right next to you. And she's not going to speak. She's just going to nod. Now, I have a description of how the two of you are going to put it away, but I would like you to describe how you and Francesca defeat a knot. And a, a, as a reminder, even though I just said it, as a reminder, your weapons are more or less hypercharged with her lightning. Is she like holding gone to, to my revolver as well? She's imbuing lightning into it. If you want her to be, like I said, this this action is in your hands. I want you to describe this. Alright. So, I give her one of my other revolvers. So both revolvers are like pointing at the core of that monstrosity. Uh-huh. And right before Yashua fires with her, he says, Jackpot. Yes, let's go, dude. Oh, I'm so proud of you for that one. All right, so you do that. Both of you pull the trigger, and a ridiculously large beam of energy comes flying out of your guns. You pierce through a knot's core. A knot gradually begins to fade away, and with its dying breath it says <clears throat> this will not be the last that you will see of me and with that Anna has been defeated and as Anna was fading away Cynthia managed to compose herself from the pain that she was feeling and without a second thought, she has used a phoenix down on Henry. So Henry is conscious again. He is at 1 HP. And you all have defeated the boss and completed the chapter. So... Henry busts yeah, through the door. Who said hot pot? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Yashua turns around, looks at Henry, and like fights the urge to throw the revolver at his head. <laughs> okay. <sighs> so, as a result of this, because there were several battles fought prior to defeating a knot I'm going to tell you now all of you are leveled up but we'll do those adjustments later not now copy in addition to leveling up you all have uh, received two achievements and you all notice that where a knot disintegrated you see a 
a black what is <clears throat> a black lotus flower on the ground it is in all of your inventories but we will describe what is done with that later and like I said because you're leveled up you get the level up sound so I'm gonna turn this down and I'm gonna play this I'm gonna do a level up pose <laughs> okay so with all that said and done with a knot's defeat and you can hear its final screams and its whispers and whatnot. Across the rest of the district, you can also hear many, many different forms and iterations of howls of pain. As, while you cannot see it, all of the other demons that were summoned on this day are all collectively gone. And out of existence once again. And oh, yes. once the battle comes to an end, those of you who are still standing but not KO'd, you all promptly drop to your feet and let the adrenaline pass and the exhaustion take over. So, yeah, I open my arms, like I'm T-posing, uh -huh. and I just fall backwards on my back. Yeah, that makes sense. And then I exhale. Uh, excuse me, Alexa, shut up. Sorry about that. That's fine. Okay. Henry Henry says no hot pot. Okay, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> you said that you, you said that and you're going to sleep in character? Yes. <laughs> okay. Wake me up if you need me. Okay. And I just collapse here at the table. Okay, and Zero he, again, physically looks absolutely horrible. But he brushes his injuries aside and he begins walking towards where Cynthia is, but she comes running out of the office area and she, she meets him halfway. And without saying anything, she raises her hands aloft and she ca <clears throat> Damn. she casts cure four on everyone let me just get the proper effect for this okay so we got one and a two and a okay so uh, if if any of you are suffering any status ailments, so they're gone. Uh, you are back at... While you are back at full health, you still feel quite exhausted, but the physical pain from everything that has taken place is gone. The mental fatigue is still there. Yes. And... While... Zero, again, physically, his wounds are all closed up and whatnot. But he has a look on his face that is both a mixture of confusion, desperation, anger, and concern. And... He, he tries his best to gather his thoughts but amidst that process he more or less blurts out 
This is why I don't want you fighting. And Cynthia, taken aback by his outburst, in retaliation, says, Well, if I don't, who will other than you? And as they begin to argue, Francesca moves faster than she has any reason to, and she puts her hand over both of their mouths, and she says, I think that there is some explanation that needs to be done concerning you two to them. And she looks over to the party. Well, she looks in between the party. And she says, I am going to go assess the damage to the city. And I'll be back. Do not worry about me. I will have a security group with me. And I will be taking... I will be reinforcing the locks that are on the priest that you all have hostage. Uh, I'm going to take Regis and Roselia with me, though. But you two explain yourselves. And with that, Francesca and Roselia take their leave as they go to group up with Regis to assess the damage and those that are injured. Yashua, Lion, anything? I was gonna say this... I was gonna, like, say this in character, is this what you call a lover's quarrel, but I... I didn't. <laughs> So what the hell happened back there? Is there? You seem to know a lot about what happened back here. A lot more than you're letting on. <sighs> well. To answer that. I knew just about as much as you did. But... The reason that I was as concerned as I was and lost my cool for a moment is because Cynthia and I are, well, not normal, which for her probably goes without saying from where you all come from, but um, where do where do I begin? So, Yashua, if you remember, when we first met, I told you that I wasn't from here. And where my people come from, they kind of have a, a thing with magic, right? Yeah, I remember. I... Struggling to stay conscious. I can't really do the whole magic thing. And by that I mean whenever I use magic there is such an intense level of physical stress that takes over my body. And even the simplest thing is making a spark with my hand causes me that pain and I'm more or less cursed with the shit and so one night in my world where I come from my dimension rather I was on my way home from working on projects and such and there were this there was this kid on the side of the road he looked he he looked pretty fucked up. He was he was bleeding. 
he was poisoned he was fading and out of consciousness constantly and he he'd been shot and I don't know how long he was there but when I saw him I just uh, I freaked out I stopped my car I threw him in my car and I violated every traffic law that existed where I was and I made a break for the closest hospital and I, I did my best to keep him around with without trying to use magic I, I gave him I gave him all the medicine that I had I tried to stop the bleeding I had a machine working on taking out the poison from him but the, the more I drove the lower his chances got and out of desperation even though I knew that it wasn't going to end well for me I casted every restorative thing that I knew and with every cast I I felt myself losing I had a heart attack I lost control of my body I nearly blacked out as I was speeding down the street and trying to keep this kid alive and keep him around and I made it to the hospital thankfully but when I got there I got into a car accident and while the kid was okay I was pretty fucked and the chances of me making it in addition to driving myself to hell and back trying to save this kid were pretty much zero and my heart had gotten damaged in such a way where I needed a transplant but you know who can do an on-the-moment heart transplant when you haven't been prepared for it, you know? And just as everyone was freaking out trying to com come up with a solution, that goddamned dragon decided to rear its ugly head and take from me not only what I thought was going to be my life but the lives of several others and the life of the kid that I just saved and then I amidst the void met our good old friend Cora and he saw what I did and he violated the rules that he as an overseer is supposed to follow and he gave me another shot but I begged for him and I begged and I pleaded and I cried I told him don't give me another chance give it to the kid he deserves it far more than I did to which he told me that he couldn't do that because the child had already passed on to what what we call uh, heaven if that exists where you all are from he ascended to a place in our after in our afterlife called the twilight realm that is where people where I come from go when they die and they haven't committed any grave atrocities and etc etc but as for myself when Korra saved my life he did it in the capacity that, that was available to him without him being discovered by his peers 
and from there I'm going to let Cynthia explain and when Zero steps aside to allow Cynthia an opportunity to speak she is hesitant at first but she eventually speaks up and she says uh, well when he when Zero got here he more or less materialized right in front of me as I was leaving out from the office from another day of work with Francesca bloodied chest wide open heart exposed but there was a a stone in his hand and there was magic circling around his heart and well, not knowing what to do I picked up his body using magic and very quickly ran over to the hospital and explained to Regis as best as I could and he explained to me that Zerol was in a suspended magical state of animation and he was in obvious need of a heart transplant and I was the only person able to give him another shot at living and I asked Regis if there was anything I could do to assist him to which Regis taught me a spell he claims to be forbidden called the link of eternal souls and it more or less caused our lives to combine into one and the the, the trade-off and the curse rather is that the reason that I've been eating so much all the time is that the spell constantly drains my energy as I am the original vessel for it and eating gives me the energy that I need to keep the spell going whether I'm paying attention to it or not and if I were to stop, then my energy would decline. And should it ever get to a dangerously low point, Zero's body will cease functioning. And through that, Zero cannot die. If he is to be hit by anything that would kill your average person. But unfortunately, I am the receptor of all that pain. I feel all of Zero's physical pain, while he feels all of my mental and emotional pain. And as much as he tries to deny it, it affects him more than what he wants to admit. And so, he can take as much of a beating as he wants. He won't die, but I will feel all the pain. I will feel all the shock and the torment and the agony. But I can't die from that. But if I were to be struck by anything that would kill me, not only would I die, Zeron would die as well. Which is why, under no circumstances, if it can be helped, 
he doesn't want me fighting. Which is where we argue a lot because I'm not going to sit around and be a damsel in, in distress and do nothing to protect my own life I want to protect his as well and if I have to fight for that then so be it and when Cynthia finishes her explanation she looks over to Zero who says nothing but casts his gaze at the ground as to not argue with her, as now is not the time for that. And, uh, well, <clears throat> that's, that's our story. That's why she eats all the time, and that's why, as you just saw, I can take a hit like that and be on the surface perfectly fine uh, I wish that the circumstances didn't lead to this but that's that's life it's just how it is when you deal with gods and interdimensional dimension consuming creatures and fucking around with life and death and shit like that Apologies if it seemed like I knew what was going on with everything else, though. It wasn't my intent. And I mean that. And on that note, we will take a quick break, and I will be back in a moment. Word. That is some hardcore life support this guy has. Holy shit. Oh my god. I'm over here like absorbing all this information. And you know what came to mind after hearing all that? Potato chips. Potato chips. <laughs> no, but there was this anime I saw, what was it called? Guilty Crown. You remember how in Guilty Crown the pilots link to the machines, right? They're sleeping inside the pod and whenever the machines take damage they feel all the pain. Uh, yeah, yeah. Honestly, there's a hardcore version of that. What I want to do when Riku gets back, I'm going to walk up to Zero and just pinch his cheek to actually see if she feels that pinch as well. Okay, I am returned. Welcome back. Thank you. Alright. So, Yashua stands up, looks at both of uh, Zero and, what's her name, Cynthia? Uh-huh. So let me get this straight. You can't take any physical damage, but she feels all that pain that damage doesn't transfer all the way to her she just feels feels the pain yes you could shoot me in the head right now while i wouldn't react cynthia would anything that happens to me that causes that would cause me physical harm she would be the recipient of it Henry gets up and walks over to Zero and kicks him in the foot. You were asleep that entire time. <laughs> Doesn't matter, I wasn't... Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, so, no, I'm... No, wait, wait, I'm not letting that happen. You were asleep. I'm not it happen, it's for the burnt chip! <laughs> you were asleep, and also Zero wasn't the one who burnt the chip. 
So you don't know. know. You don't it's know any of what was just said. Oh. Hey, I can still kick him. <laughs> Go back over there. Go back to your sofa. Back to sleep before I put you to sleep. So, Zero. What I'm getting out of this is you're emotionally the woman now, huh? Zero. There were, there were face palms at that response. And he was just not going to say anything as he tries not to laugh. I feel like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Does this. Five. So, this is only with pain, not other physical trauma? Like, what if we tickle you right now? Is she gonna feel it too? No. No, oh, you're no fun. And also, don't even try to do that. I'm not tickless anyway. I'll tickle, I'll tickle. <laughs> hmm. Are you sure? I'm gonna flick his forehead. <laughs> you flick his forehead. He looks at you. And Cynthia says, what the fuck? Oh my god. That is... The most romantic and cursed thing I've ever seen. Well, that's... Is there really no way to reverse this? Um, no. Aside from death itself, nothing can set this backwards. Plus, um, Zero, uh, also has, like, half of my beating heart in him anyway. So, um, it's not the first time we've been told that it's the most also romantic and cursed thing ever. And as Cynthia says that, Zero very casually uh, leans <clears throat> on the table next to him. And he says, well, you didn't react like that when I proposed to you, so. Oh. Oh. Oh, I see. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> When you proposed, are you the one that cried? God. <laughs> Damn it. Yes, I was. Even though I was trying my best not to. Perfect. But the real right, question no. is, what happens if one of you guys dies? Well, from what are, she explained, are, are you, she dies, they both die. Yeah, but I'm, I'm assuming Henry is awake now. Henry's been awake. He's just been laying there. <laughs> How can Henry sleep with all you guys making racket? Okay, so you I asked... I assume Henry already knew all this since he was working with Francesca for a while. Guys, for a while. And I never told him this. Okay, fair enough. So... As a response to Henry asking that question, uh, Cynthia is just gonna glare over for half a second before she changes her mind. She just looks over and she says, Ugh. He can't die. If I die, we both die. End of story. Oh, Sarah! <laughs> it's great about you, mm. about all this. Said it again. Said it seemed like Drava knew about all this, because she went to like protect her as soon as any like damage was incurred. Oh no, she didn't. She didn't. she everything you all just learned, she learned too. But she moved over to move Cynthia out of panic because she didn't want her to get hurt. This is this is news to everybody.
Is there no way to numb the pain when he takes damage? Nope. Or is it just not physical pain you feel, but like, I don't know, your soul? Um, I'm pretty sure that if I felt the pain in my soul, it would probably be a lot worse. And Regis has been helping us try to come up with a way to prevent me from feeling all of the physical pain, but we haven't we haven't hit the mark yet. But we're we're, we're still trying. We're still trying. Well, yeah, there's only there there's only a small amount of pain tolerance you could take before you reach a breaking point. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, thanks you two for sharing. Yeah, well, you were bound to find out sooner or later. Yeah, but it's a lot better to know who I'm working with from the individual itself, not just by uncovering it on my own. That's how you build trust. I've got well, a point on that one. Well, at least that's what I tried to do. I wasn't very successful. <laughs> Recalls the Merc. All oh, right, that reminds me. You yeah. have vast knowledge on crystals, right? You asking that to Cynthia? I'm asking that to Zero. Uh, no, I don't. I don't really do the whole crystal stuff if I can avoid it. That's more her field. Why? Did you find something? Well, yeah. As Yashua digitizes the white and red crystal. One of the mercs I took, I'll drop this. He was really desperate to get it to get it out of his hands. I think he wanted to use it for something, but I have no idea what it is. It's really warm to the touch, so I'm assuming it's some kind of explosive. Upon inspection of the item, Zero notices that, yes, it is indeed very warm to the touch. And he notices that it can break apart into two segments. And he puts them back together, he takes them apart again, and he speaks to the holy shit. This is a key. A key. A key to what, though? What the hell? Cynthia, you can read these rune shits, can't you? Take a look at this. She takes the crystal in her hands, and although it takes her a bit of time <clears throat> to decipher what the runes say, she reads aloud that the runes on the crystal read as follows. Get to the heart of the city. Inactivate the, the destruction device. Destruction device? Yeah, that's... That's all it says on here, but... At least now we know that there is something at the heart of the city that needs to be taken care of as soon as possible, preferably. But uh, we don't know how to get to where this thing is. Hmm. You think the key will get warmer the closer we get to the center of the city? In a perfect world, <clears throat> Javel speaks up. In a perfect world, yeah, but that would be way too easy. Way too easy. Well, it would. 
but if you want to activate a destruction, a bomb, simply put, you're gonna make it want to eat. You're gonna want to make it simple for people to use. Now, is this guy still alive, or is he dead? Uh, he is unconscious, alive, and bound. We could always beat him with it until he gives us answers. You I mean, you could. have a point there, yeah. But I prefer to destroy the key, but... I feel like destroying a key will set it off. We should... We should put this somewhere safe. Hmm. At least for now, until we figure out what to do with that. If you don't mind uh, handing that over to me, I'm going to put it in safekeeping, and then I'm going to make a copy and analyze it. See if yeah, I can go come ahead. up with a countermeasure for this thing. Or even make a counterfeit key that won't trigger the device. What was that Merc doing with a fucking key like that? Was he planning to run and activate him? He was certainly desperate. Oh, whatever the son of a bitch was gonna do. Uh, he's been taken care of by you and yours. Thank you, truly. But, oh, no. Um, Thank Draver. And all I simply want. All I simply wanted to do was, uh, you know, hire him, convince him, learn something from him. But, you know, as uh, most people I've encountered so far, and they ain't quite fond of me. Well, you know, <clears throat> it's just life. And uh, well, life's a bitch, as I'm, I'm sure you know from experience. <laughs> it sure is. Well, let's just see what this guy knows. Yeah. I'm just like glocking my revolvers. You do that. I'm gonna. And I don't, I don't know. Chief told me not to, but I'm gonna go trail after Chief and catch up, I guess. And with that Zero takes his leave. Raw strength to slap this fucker awake. Sure. A priest. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm slapping him anyways. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so. You slap the unconscious hostage. So Wake damn up. hard that it echoes through the entire building. And he very quickly wakes up. <coughs> Who dare? Hello there. Who are you? And where am uh, I? What? Did he just say, who am I? Where? Oh, okay. I was about to say, did I slap him that hard that it gave him magnesia? That would have <laughs> been jokes. How do you feel after that long nap? You feel good? You were sleeping so peacefully. I, re I didn't want to disturb you, but there's some questions that need answering. And who says I am to answer you? Wrong answer, electrocute him. No, no, don't be so hasty. 
Oh, I'm gonna be hasty. Can I electrocute him with a little spark? Um. Until he gives us right answers. Well, I'll, you know what, Henry? I'll let you fuck around and find out. Go ahead. Go oh. ahead. <laughs> Zap him. Zap. It says zap him, not sh lightning bolt him. It's a little spark. Oh, dude, if you critted him, that would have been funny if you turn him into a french fry. Uh, after you cast spark on him, he reacts in pain. And he says, I... There is no conceivable method for me to escape the situation. But regardless of what you do, I will not jeopardize our cause. Wrong answer, spark again. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's oh, dead. Man. Why? Ugh. I'm gonna roll strength to punch Henry in the face. What are you talking about? We have our rise still from earlier. <laughs> he was at one HP, and you hit him with two magic attacks. You overkilled him. Right, Tim. We need to keep electrocuting him. <laughs> He's gonna return to the ether. I'm not. I'm not wasting my phoenix stones. No, we have I wanted to use a rise on. I no. wanted to use a rise on him, but like he's an enemy. <laughs> a rise wouldn't work. Because he's not KO'd. He's dead. If he had, if if Lion had restore, he'd be able to bring him back. But he doesn't. I had my fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes our intel. I'm just punching Henry. I rolled a 16. Uh, hang on, one moment. I'll try and block it, because I want to hit a 1. <laughs> one moment. Thinking about how I want this to play out. Hmm. Okay, so Yashua, in a moment of frustration at losing out on very key intel, you throw a particularly aggressive right hook to Henry's jaw, and while he does not fall over, he does stagger backwards just a bit from the hit. What do you gotta make things so complicated, Henry? We gotta have fun here. That. <laughs> Think about it. We could have more targets for you to zap if we got the answers we wanted. I walk up the king and zap him too. <laughs> I, I would have let you burn him alive after we got the answers. You could have just. Wait, who and what are you casting Spark on? <laughs> King. He has resilience to it, so it's not going to do much. Are you zapping me? Yes, I'm zapping you for the punch. Oh, I'm shooting you in the leg. No, you're oh. not, because this is turning oh. into a PvP session, and I'm there is no PvP in this campaign. Okay, fair enough. If you, if you, besides, gosh, right, if you shoot him, he's pretty much dead. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, he has a shining word on him. No, he doesn't. No. Don't cast it and shoot me, Jerry. Can I cast shining word and kick his ass? No. 
Stupid. At least pistol whip him. <sighs> I suppose, but that's it. Actually, no, let me put him in a headlock. You know, just like a little... F a friendly scuffle. While that is happening... Can I roll investigation on the corpse? Uh, yes, you may. While that is happening, Drava um, does not see the humor in this situation, and she begins to shout at Henry, What's your fucking problem? Why did you do that? Do you not know that you potentially have further jeopardized what we came here to do and have put these people in greater danger and we're trying to save them from what's going on? Does, does, does none of this matter to you? And before he we wasn't can... giving answers. That... <laughs> What kind of excuse? That doesn't fucking mean you kill him! Hey, 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 I only shocked him twice. We beat him half- or... Yeah, we beat him half to death earlier. <laughs> Drava is... gripping her staff so hard that her knuckles are turning white. As she very reluctantly puts her staff back on her back but when she reopens her eyes they are glowing a very dangerous and threatening red rep henry hot i was always curious about that your eyes always glow a red clear when you're angry can i investigate the corpse <laughs> uh, can i get out of this uh, Lion is already doing that. And failing. He failed. No, he didn't. Oh, I didn't. Oh. Oh, he, he succeeded? Okay. <laughs> uh, upon in... <clears throat> upon inspection of the now corpse in the room, <laughs> you find the pocketbook that the priest was using to read and cast off whatever spells he was attempting to cast. You find a map, a small pocket-sized map, in his back pocket, and his wristwatch, it is much larger <clears throat> than your average one. You rocking a Rolex. And you can see what appears to be a complicated mechanism on the outside of it. You don't really know what it's for, but it's there. And I will type this out so that you all uh, do not forget. Okay. And to the uh, comment about Jay was eyes, she responds with, "It's it's been this way for the last couple of years. I don't know why it happens myself. I stopped. I stopped paying attention to it really, though. Um, when it does happen." For a reason that even I don't really understand, I can see everyone's uh, magic strength surrounding them, almost like a cloak of sorts. Huh. The only issue with that is that it is incredibly bright and I hate it. But 
as for you, Henry, I don't know what your deal is, but I'm going to ask you once and one time only that you chill out with this because the next time you jeopardize something or dash our chances of us making progress, I'm going to throw you right into the heart of the fire. And I'm not going to care. And with that, with the silence filling the room, Dreva lets out a very, very exasperated exhale. And her eyes gradually stop glowing. Hmm. There's like a little bit of sus in Yashua's eyes after seeing that. But he doesn't question it anymore. Alright. Uh, Lion, with the items that you have found, would you like to create an interaction based off of that? Um, okay, so we have the, the handbook, a small map, and a strange watch that's larger oh. than the normal, like, size watch, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have the key on us anymore, right? Like, it's with, uh, Zero? Zero. Yeah, Zero has the key. Alright. <laughs> um, I will... Roll to. I wanted to like inspect the watch, but like, or not the watch, the handbook. Uh, that will be intelligence and investigation. Yeah, While you do that, <laughs> can you hand me the map? I want to take a look at that. Alright, Yashua, you now have the map, and if I'm assuming you're going to read this, uh, you two, that will be an intelligence roll. Yeah, before that, I'm going to make my way to the table and just spread the map out. So mine was intelligence, and what else? For the book? Investigation. You said insight. No, I didn't. <laughs> the same thing for me? Uh, Yes. Alright. Damn. My character's uh, kind of a... He's a brute. He doesn't know about all this... This stuff. Well, that may be true. You did pass. And... Did yeah, like, uh, when I... When I ask you all to do, like, two rolls back-to-back, -back, I am uh, having you do cumulative rolls. Okay. Yep. Jeez. Okay, so Kenny, uh, oops, whoops, Lion, upon inspection of the handbook, when you begin to read it, it is horribly written, it is barely legible, but you come to realize that he was carrying around a handwritten spell book of manipulation and every word spoken from that proceed has the process proceed along little by little and once the spell or spells are read to completion anyone within the vicinity who is paying full attention to you falls under victim of the spell and Yashua, upon inspection of the map, you notice that there are several pink X's strewn across the cityscape. Not, not just this district, the entire city. And 
above them you see numbers, you see 1, you see 2, 3, all the way up to 12. And some locations have special notes and markings next to them. And some of these read as uh, youth, elderly, gullible, easily succumbed. Oh, it easily succumbed. Six, prior success here. High levels of spiritual energy, etc. And you piece together that this is a map that the cultists have made up, and these are designated spots where they will be having their quote meetings to recruit people to their cause and so uh, uh, Lion Yashua uh, if you wish to combine your knowledge and pull it together feel free Yashua does a small whistle to call over Lion. What do we got here? These are locations for civilians. Take hey, a look hey. at this. There are civilians here with high spirit, with high, what was it? Mana? Spiritual energy. Spiritual energy. There's another section here that shows you the more gullible civilians, the weaker civilians, the elderly, the young. These are strike points. These are all targets. How are we going to cover all this? This book has multiple different spells in it to control the populations. Dreva, she walks over and she speaks. Yeah, there's, there's no possible way. <coughs> excuse me. That the five of us can realistically cover all this distance and however much time it takes because it took us long enough. To get to the first two that we had to deal with and there are 12 others and not only that they're all over the city not just in this district alone and Cynthia speaks up and she says well this is why we have a and Henry knows it's because he's a part of this but we have our own hidden task force ready to deal with things should they get to dire situations and we have all of the machina and the drone that Zero has created over the years in preparation and security detail just in case something crazy like this would happen but it's going to take us some time to mobilize all of this and create battle plans and, and, and strategies and whatnot, but it's convenient that that son of a bitch was carrying all that stuff on him, though it's strange that he would be carrying all that stuff on him, specifically the map anyway, but we learned something after all, I guess. Though I would rather have learned it from while he was living and not dead. Because now I have to dispose of a goddamn corpse. I could do it. No. It's fire. <laughs> you've, you've done enough. You've done enough. Yashua sighs after Henry volunteers to dispose of a body. Anyways,
So Jeva, she speaks up. So, what now? What do we? Where do we go from here? What do you guys think we should do with this watch? Uh, All right, that thing. Hmm. Can we call Zeral? Uh, I don't want anybody tinkering because it's above average. We don't know if they'll set off anything. And we have the inter like the communicator spell. Yeah, you can call him. Hey Zero, we have uh this is in character, that's Henry. Hey Zero, we have something we need you to take a look at. Can you head over to to the meeting room quickly? Uh I can't make it over there right now. Have have Cynthia send me a picture of it. And and make tell her to send it through the encrypted network and not to my phone. I'll... Chief Regis, Roselia, and I were... kind of handling another situation. We'll be there shortly, though. Over to the other side, see if I find anything. Say that again? Can I flip the map over to the other side to see if I find anything? Like maybe some hidden text or notes? Sure. Uh, but for that, I'm going to ask you for... I'm going to ask you to roll inside after I say what I'm about to say. So, you turn the map to the opposite side, and it appears to be covered in some kind of reddish brown dust it's 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 pretty caked on there but you can just barely make a couple words out here and there on on the on the map and now i'm going to ask you to roll insight and then roll perception these are two separate rolls these are not cumulative all right. Hmm. Okay. So, with the inside roll you of of the words that you can make out you see them and then you begin to try to formulate the words into a sentence and with the perception roll you happen to notice a couple of very faint imagery i mean Im images along the middle lining of the map and when everything is all said and done, you read aloud what I am about to DM you. Or rather, I can whisper it to you. I can do that instead. Whisper to... Uh -oh. Where are you putting this in? I am whispering it to you in roll 20. Oh. I'm over here looking at Discord. I'll send it to you in Discord too, so you don't forget. Whispering works on D20. Will I be able to see it? Like, it just pops up. Oh, okay. You can't pronounce that to save my life. <laughs> it, it, it's read as the Interitus Exigem Project. Interitus Exigem Project? What the hell? 
I say this out loud. What is that? Once you read that aloud, you happen to look back at the images on in the faded portions of the map, and then you look back at the watch, and you can see small indentations similar to what the crystal looked like when it was separated into two pieces. Who's holding on to the watch? Zero has the watch. Oh no 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 that that's 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 the crystal key. A uh, lion has the watch. Yashua grabs the watch from Lion and says, excuse me for a sec, and just puts it beside the map. Trying to connect the dots. Mm hmm. Do I have to roll to connect the dots? I am thinking about that. For this, I am going to say no. Okay. Can I investigate the watch? See what exactly it is without tinkering with it? Just investigating the general watch? Uh, when you put it like that, yes. Yes, you may. Okay. What do I have? I would have to do investigation roll, right? Yes, sir. You should ask for the watch first. No, I, I'm not allowed to touch anything anymore. Okay, so... I, I'm pretty hmm. sure you guys don't trust me touching anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we want Sparky touching it. So with that roll... Um... You see... That... What appears to be an adjustment for the <clears throat> for the minute hand in the hour hand to you it looks like that button can be uh, pressed inwards to the watch. I'm not pressing it. <laughs> I I I tell. Uh... Joshua, that it looks like the button at the top could be pressed. I'm not pressing nothing. I have enough belief on me. Huh? Really? I want to push the button, but I'm thought, I'm afraid something bad would happen. I, th I think this is one for Zeril to handle. This is a little too big. I, I I speak my opinion out loud. Mm hmm I don't know. That button is really enticing. I say we go for it. Okay. What's the worst that can happen? Another demon spawns? Yeah, I'm taking the button. I'll take the blame on this one then. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let me activate. And then he, he just clicks it. Might as well take two blames for one day. If somebody's going to press it, at least let it be me. No, wait, hold on. Let me activate a shining word first. <laughs> so. Suicide bomb, beep! Oh, <laughs> uh, he got a critical. What does that mean? The button has been pressed. And the watch opens up to reveal a small red crystal. When the crystal comes out of the watch, it is so damn hot that all of you collectively step backwards in <clears throat> in reaction to the extreme heat. Can I toss it away from the map so it doesn't ignite the map? I was going to grab the map at... at 
as I step away. Uh, we're going to go with uh, Yashua's action of grabbing the map and moving backwards. Dropping right here. Okay, so you all step away. And the crystal just floats. It's suspended in the air. Still letting off its heat. And... As you all look at it, suddenly you you hear what sounds like tapping on the window. Tap who? You look over to the window, and Yashua, you see a familiar, small, bird-sized friend. The red chocobo. <laughs> <gasps> I automatically just yeet the window open. Can I? Yeah. I yeet the win Can I do a strength throw to see if I, if I break the window by accident? Uh, sure. Hey, Alright, hey, hey, hey. huh? <laughs> you do not break the window. Alright, thank God. I would have to electrocute for the, that one. <laughs> Frankie's bar. <laughs> if you shock me, I'm putting you in a wheelchair. Hey, you break your Frankie's window. I could so, pay for it, I got Gil. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I grabbed the chocobo. Alright, so you open the window, Chocobo flies inside, you are very much cradling the small creature as everyone collectively looks at you in confusion, but before you can say anything, the Chocobo notices the crystal floating in the air, it flies out of your arms, it eats the crystal. <laughs> and it turns one shade darker. And it returns and it looks at you and it is smiling. Did your bird just eat our intel? I, um... <laughs> Yes, it did. Can I walk over the chocobo and pat his head? <laughs> uh, roll animal handling. <laughs> Dude, if it packs you, I'm gonna laugh. I love it. You reach out to pet it, and it does a 90 degree rotation around your hand. Aw. <laughs> Wait, are you saying they just dodged him? Yes. Can I do a little emperor in front of it? <laughs> he what? A little emperor in front of it. Why? Why not? <laughs> Dude, don't you dare pick a fight with my chocobo. I will fill you full of holes. I'm not picking a fight. Apparently it likes warm things. I want to try to befriend it. I will allow this. Okay, so should I just do a little ember bell yes. or Chocobo's about to cast a meteor in your ass? Dude. <laughs> that chocobo's strong as fuck. <laughs> so you cast Ember as an attempt to befriend it, and in response <clears throat> Uh, its eyes light up, it opens its mouth, and, it. and that happens. Oh. Um. Going by the direction of the flame, did it just disintegrate that corpse? Uh, 
Yes. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Um, I'm gonna go and pick up the chocobo again and just, you know, pat its head. I go in the corner. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now, continuing on. Once Yashua has the red chocobo in his hands yet again, it squirms around for a bit and it climbs up your arm and sits on your shoulder. And it looks around the room and everyone is still incredibly confused. And you hear the sound of someone clearing their throat. And all of you look around and you look at each other. But the origin came from the chocobo itself. Oh god, it talks. <laughs> <coughs> Pleasure to make all of your acquaintances. My name is... Well, I have two names. One of them starts with an X. The other one starts with a P. But I am not going to reveal that information to you at this point in time. So my name, for the time being, will be Xander. And with that being said, today's session will come to a close. You have 10 seconds to get out your fake BS sponsorships now. Like and subscribe or else Henry is going to zap you too. And 10. That's it. <laughs>